Welcome to the Author Out Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Joe. And this this is really just a show of three friends that are going to catch up now. I'm not doing the normal intro because we've been mm. we've literally started the show like four different times, guys. Except I haven't actually counted us in because we just keep mm. going on and talking anyway. So our podcast is about everything off road. We're going to talk. Ross is in the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest. Joel's in Australia, and the hilarious Joel's technically bit of joke. in the Southeast. The future. The future. He's in the future. Yeah. He's definitely He's in the future. The future. <laughs> Which I got. One of my Instagram reels the other day was a girl saying, like, England's like six hours ahead of us. Why can't they just tell us what happens? And I was just like, I hate, (laughs) hate that so much. Whether (laughs) she is that dumb or whether she's smart enough to make the reel to just get the shares for being that dumb. Like, either one of those piss me off. Like, (laughs) Hopefully it's the latter. It's like Back to the Future 2 with the fucking book that shows all the sports teams that won. Dude, the Cubs only missed it by a year. Yeah, right. They only missed it by if the, uh, my team hadn't won in 2015, it could have been the Cubs. Like, yep, they missed it by one nice, year. Nice win by the Chiefs last night, by the way. That was that was that was in the a little that was in the morning. Closer. That was in the morning. That they was played in, in Germany. Right. I, watch, <laughs> I, Germany. I watch the highlights. I watch NFL yeah. highlights on the elliptical oh, wow. on Monday mornings. So okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I thought. Hey, it, yeah. So it appeared nighttime to you it was because t- local time for them, it okay. was nighttime. <laughs> Correct. But so. for me, it was great because my kids woke me up. I made a cup of coffee and I started watching football. Like it was, it was literally fantastic. Well, that's that like Vegas, sucks. Vegas for me for F1 in, in a week and a half is like afternoon. It's Dude. Kind of like, it's really weird. Yeah, but like, it's a it's local. It's really news. screwed up because it's, weird. <laughs> it's like, hold on. Where's my it, phone? It's midnight in Vegas is the start time, right? Is it that like? Mm, no, I, I think it it's like 10 p.m. 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. Which means it so starts that's midnight at for you. Midnight for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Which means 1 a.m. It's 1 a.m. for me. Yeah. In the same country. Vegas is. Yeah. Speaking of F1, Joel, uh, Piastri, you got I yourselves know. somebody with some we got two Aussies. There. Two Aussies. Two, yeah. Don't forget Danny. Yeah, they I mean, were showing some good pace too. I know, except when he's you trying know, to Oscar, tires. Oscar had a dreadful weekend. But yeah, when he's <laughs> not must, getting hit by tires. That yeah. was spicy stuff. I must drag out the photo I have of the two of them together from the infamous Australian Grand Prix from 2020, which got cancelled. Um, Where everybody was there. Shoot with Renault. And I had Dan and Oscar next to each other with a bunch of Renault cars out behind. So That's um, awesome. Yeah, so it's cool to... to uh, to now what to yeah see them both running now it's uh it, yeah it's pretty amazing have there ever been two australian drivers concurrent no not so concurrent. Like just now yeah just yeah, yeah that's the first time pretty awesome because the only one the other drivers i can think of are like other than mark weber and then going back to the 90s farther back yeah, 80s like 70s 80s probably alan jones is it I was going to say, I know it's a very normal name. It's either Smith or Johnson or something. Like, I yeah. I was going to say Hill, yeah. but it's definitely not Damon Hill or Graham Hill. Like, I knew. No, no, no. That's no, why it was then, to okay. us. But, but then <laughs> David Brabham also competed, but I don't know whether he's considered Australian or he is considered mm-hmm. English. Speaking of F1, did you guys see the trailer for the Hulu Braun documentary? Oh, yes. Can't wait for it that. Could be good. Could so you're right. There were good. you were there were nineties as well. So David okay. Brabham was nineties, ninety and ninety four for Brabham and Simtech. Okay. Um, yes, was... that trailer looks amazing. It looks really, really cool. I... Having read Nick Fry's book about that period is fascinating. So I'm looking forward to seeing visually, you know, what it's yeah, it's, and seeing footage from that era as well. So uh, and seeing pretty... Jensen get back behind the wheel should be good. Yeah, that should be really cool. Dude can drive. I mean, they, shit, they can all drive. But, yeah. Um, Piastri is and ca- and very can exciting. Yes. It'll be good. We're, we're like, yeah. way in the weeds here. This is no longer... This is completely yeah. 100%. <laughs> this, the only this, time this is just any three friends off, talking about stuff. Yeah. We don't have show notes anymore at this Off-roading point. Off-roading <laughs> in Formula One is bad. Let the record very show. Bad. Yeah. Generally uh, very bad. Charles, stay off the grass. Oh, God. That was just, like... <laughs> yeah. 
my f my I have F one TV that I watch it on, and, and it it fucking freezes all the time, and it froze for a second, and I was like, "What just happened?" And like, and then it goes back to another, and he's just like strolling, you know, down the path behind it. It was like, "Wow, this is really something, Ooh. huh?" Didn't yeah. Grosjean? Didn't he wreck out he, on the yeah. formation lap? In yeah, that was in um, Brazil. Signa- was it Singapore or Brazil or Abu Dhabi? It was one of those. Well, it's Brazil, else, I yeah. think. Was it? There's been a, been a few that have gone off on the. Uh, there was one yeah. that was a wet. I'm pretty sure it was a wet Grand Prix, and someone went it off. It was early. 2016. Oh, was it? Okay. Where uh, Grosjean crashed on the formation lap in Brazil. In Brazil, okay. Oh. Same track. Um. I, yeah, I that's why. I, that's why. I, <laughs> for you know, a lot of people say the hardest job is being the number two driver to Max, but I maintain the hardest job in Formula One is being Charles Leclerc's therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he seems to have enough money to be able to afford multiple therapists, so I'm sure yeah, he'll be okay. But, <laughs> oh man! But the guy has got... just had that many hits. Have you? you know over the last few years you know missing out on that Dude. monaco and then obviously this and whatever else it's yeah 10 poles in a row without a win that's just mm. uh insult to injury there was so much hope and so much um you know hope that they were going to do well at the start but it's just yeah it just it just hasn't happened yep. unfortunately for them this year so we have a phrase uh specifically that we use in Kansas City uh, professional football talk where we talk about the Los Angeles Chargers, that the Chargers are going to charge her because every year they're like, oh, they've got too much talent. They're they're, yeah. they're going to win the division and they constantly do things like that. I'm starting to think that the phrase also needs to be applied to Ferrari, like Ferrari's going to Ferrari and like, oh, definitely. They're going to take themselves out of it. Like the last... Yeah. Like what was the 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 poor tire rear tire changer? Like the car drove away and they snapped his femur? Like... Things that no other team struggles with. Or they like Ferrari. double stack and the cars are just nowhere near far enough apart because they didn't yeah. know that they were double stacking. Yeah, it's it just it's yeah. a perpetual Ferrari's gonna Ferrari. disaster. Ferrari yeah. For, Ferrari. yeah. For a team that should like every year going into it, we're like, here's the next contender. No, they're third, fourth, fifth. Like Yeah, and it's like a double edged sword because obviously Look at the colors of my office. I'm not a Ferrari fan, but <laughs> neither of us are, dude. But Ferrari <laughs> doing well and having success is good for the. It's inherently good for the sport yeah. and for the furthering of like enthusiasm across Europe. You know, so it's the fa- it's the fan base. It's, they are quintessentially F1. Fucking been for many years. Well, then you look at obviously the Ferrari film that's coming out next month. You know, yeah. There's obviously the interest around that. Michael Mann wouldn't have gone and made that unless there was obviously the interest in it. I still have yet to read that book. My aim is to try and read that the book that it's based on before it mm-hmm. hits. But yeah, they are they are quintessential F1. They have been for years, so it, it's good to see. Everyone wants to see them do well and return to winning championships. But um, yeah, they're just they are just Ferrari themselves at the moment. It's, uh, oh, is it based on Enzo's biography? Like the yeah. big in okay, yeah, it's based on one of them. Um, I think it's. I think it says Enzo Ferrari, the man, the cars, and the races, the machine. It's Brock Yates's book. Yeah, Brock Yates. That's book. it. That's what I yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. going to say AJ Bain, but I but AJ Bain didn't. No, AJ He's, He's good like hell. Like hell. He's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another another great book. Other like, Ferrari time. Yeah. Yeah. Well. His AJ's second book that we don't talk about enough is Arsenal of Democracy, is the right. World War II stuff. Oh. And it's such a heavy look at Ford again. I think that's, I think the Go Like Hell actually spun off Arsenal of Democracy because of how much stuff he found on Ford. Which is the nice Ford. Part. Okay. It does bring out all that stuff. Like it, it, it goes deep dive on Henry Ford. Like it's. Do you have it? No, nah, I had it on for- Kindle. For me to buy it would probably cost less than for you to ship it to me and me to ship it back. There's, there's also libraries. Just saying, heard of them? I have heard of them. <laughs> That's what I yeah. I just get a library card, even though I do. I do audiobooks, so like I like to listen to them. I'm a weirdo. That's fair. And my library does it for free. That's fair. <laughs> Speaking of audiobooks, and let's actually like start our normal Woo-hoo! trajectory of the show. Uh, I have 
a suburban something coming <laughs> on not a high country Wednesday. oh please hold i should have had this queued up this is this is you had um, some cool stuff lately scottsdale bonanza stuff. Uh, Silverado. I'm going to list all the old trims from it Chevrolet. Is a high country, high, high country I, I, with Super Cruise. Um, okay. Oh, have you had Super Cruise before? I've had it on like five different vehicles, and we actually okay. just took a CT5V, non Blackwing. The Blackwing was crashed. Oh, it yeah? was supposed to <laughs> be with Mr. Matt Farah and then come to me, but it oh, was I think crashed. I see that somewhere. Yeah, before Matt had it, uh, somebody put it into a construction site, which allegedly jumped out into the road in front of them. Mm. However that works. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, we had the um we took the C T five V to my best friend's wedding in South Jersey, which was oh, nice. I think we put like four hundred and fifty miles on it round trip, which, you know, not not like a ton of miles for a road trip, but for the first time we left our baby with uh with anybody else for more than like 12 hours it was something um and i i did use super cruise actually quite a bit and i'm like skeptic of skeptics with radar cruise control because i've had a few of them almost put me into like overpasses mm -hmm. which is terrifying yeah. um obviously and uh and the I know they updated it and they keep updating it. And the iteration in the CT5V was amazing. I must have done, I must like, we got off of the Jersey Shore and got on the Garden State and I must have had it on for like 75 miles and like no issues whatsoever. It was awesome. The only time it told me to like take resume control was coming up to a bridge, which yeah, right. I can't blame it for. So. So yeah. CT5 XTS size? Um, or is it smaller? CT5 replaced CTS. Okay. Actually, wait. CT5 is like, it's like between no, be a BMW. CT6 would be XTS. It looks bigger. Yeah. I well, CT6 died a horrible, rapid death. Um. The CT5 is like between a three series and a five series. Five series, okay, yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's a good size car. Um, yeah, it's got enough room in the back seat to fit, you know, a large, large baby seat, mm -hmm. and enough trunk space to fit. Oh, the XTS all the I things. had when I was in the states had so much blue space. The XTS <laughs> is the choice. Yeah, vehicle was awesome. for livery yeah. and airport shuttles these days. Yeah, I because can't. it's a front drive architecture, so it has like the biggest trunk that you can imagine, you know. Um, yeah, it was great. Yeah. We lived with it for two and a half weeks, so it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah those were actually okay cars. Like mm -hmm. people are putting a lot of miles on those things, and they don't care. Um, forgot to do my job for a little bit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. That's, Share photos. Come on, dude. That's kind of it. The one that I had was. Uh, the brightest red of reds, like oh, it's a full color. fire engine red on you know a three hundred and forty horsepower car, and it was like a little bit much. Um, <laughs> good car though, really good car. Uh, it, another demonstration in why V sixes shouldn't have loud exhausts, and I stand my ground on that till the end of time. That's it. That's the same <laughs> same spec. Yeah, just gotta tell me what color, man. I'm good at this. <laughs> no, a little practice you yeah don't, no, don't tell car. me the color i'm just guessing man <laughs> yeah good car all-wheel drive on it is a little weird because it like we drove or let me rephrase that i drove through what effectively was like a hurricane at one point in it like torrential downpour and like 40 mile per hour winds and uh it's on Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, like PS4S tires, which I had on the Miata. They're awesome tires. And uh, it, if you give it too much gas, it breaks traction in the back, <laughs> grabs in the front, realize that the front is grabbing, stops sending power to the back, and then sorts itself out. And there's like a quick delay when traction control kicks in, and you're just like, oh, God, why is the car? Oh, no, everything's <laughs> fine. It's just doing its thing. Um, 
but that's why you should just buy a rear wheel drive sports sedans. <laughs> buy the good so, ones. Yeah. Also, so, um, do we do we even want to go into the other shit that I've been driving? Uh, uh, the only other things on there is uh, zero two HD. HD. Yeah, uh, the arguably largest vehicle from the factory that I I think it's physically dimensionally bigger than the Hummer EV, which is really? heavier. Yeah, wow. it's dude, it's two hundred and fifty one inches long. It's enormous. Holy crap. Yeah, it's Does it's it like fit in your driveway? two inches tall. It fits in my driveway, but if I were to try to back it into my garage, I would have maybe a soda can between the bed and the garage door top. Like it's comically large. When I stand next to it, I'm like five ten on a good day in you know, in my high heel in my boots. Um my eyes are at the bed, like at the top of the tailgate. It's a stock truck. It's so silly. Yeah. Uh but I can't really talk much about it because I I was supposed to take it on a trip this weekend and there was some COVID swirling around in the house, so we didn't I didn't do that trip. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about about the truck. It's fucking huge. Um but that was and then, that was my takeaway the Silverado 1500 ZR2 that I drove was oh this is huge but again I was in similar to you woods and you're driving a truck even bigger like <laughs> yeah no I had the 1500 ZR2 this thing dwarfs it it's God. like so how long my, is it it's 250? 251 inches which means it's 30 something inches longer than the avalanche was which well was, I there was a 2500 the... avalanche your truck, your Suburban is probably 225 or 228, right? Uh, 0.4. Okay. So they so they are getting longer. The new ones are 225. So it's two and a half <laughs> feet longer than your truck. God. And like, so my dad has a 2500 Silverado. Still any Silverado. Seats for, right? Or five. Dude, <laughs> and the back seats terrible in these things. Like Ram and Ford figured it out. GM is just like, yeah, the people in the back get some room, but they're going to sit on church pews um i my ram my, ford and toyota that tundra and, crew max is good backseat like, yeah it, it's <laughs> it's okay it's it's better than gm but it's not great but my dad has a 2500 silverado same engine this is i don't know three or four years old and the difference in height like to look in his engine bay, I need a step stool. To look in this engine bay, I need a like a small ladder. Like it's <laughs> Chris, I'll Joel, I'll send you guys a picture I, offline. I of, believe of it. <laughs> my daughter in her stroller in front of this. Yeah. And the top of her stroller doesn't even come to the bow tie on the front. Oh wow. Yeah. It's it's like Yeah, they just are so high. That's, that's just a Z seventy one. That's not even the big boy. Like right, no. I thought I was like this was similar to your dad's truck, yeah. right? Like yeah. Uh, yeah, that's even taller though. His is just his is like a LT something. An LT. His truck drives like a Cadillac. It's crazy. LTZ. Um, yes. I was like, that's the top top trim level. Yeah, he stole that truck too. He bought it in COVID when everybody was looking at SUVs, and he paid. He got a CPO and he paid like thirty grand off MSRP and it had like twenty something thousand miles. It was like a what? crazy deal. Yeah, like unbelievable. Um, anyways, he I got will... it before the COVID car prices went nuts. No, 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 no. Yeah. During, during the COVID, during that, during it was like if if I could go back in time, I would have taken out like a mortgage on my house, bought three of them, and flipped them for twenty grand over each. Like. <laughs> he got the deal in the century. It, it's yeah. Anyways, uh, the only other thing I'm going to talk about on my side is um, my brother wrote his first review. He is no. a talented writer, and uh, and for a long oh, time, so not I'm, like us. Well, we're just writers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, I've been trying to get him to write stuff for a long time because he's he 
drives side by sides and he rides quads and he like cares about his truck and all that stuff. And, you know, he's in this world and kind of tangentially in this space and finally convinced him to go through with it. And he can am loaned us, uh, loaned me, I guess, technically this, uh, this Outlander XT 700. And I tasked my brother with, writing a first look review and he's going to be putting together a full review of the thing. And yeah, please everybody go check it out. It's on Hooniverse. His name's Spencer. And hopefully this is the first of many. This was also, he rode this quad on Saturday on the trail on the trip that I didn't go on because of COVID. Um, and that was his first time riding a quad on a trail since 2016. He's been driving oh, wow. side by sides <laughs> since then. Yeah. And, uh, and he was like, it's it's amazing. It's completely different. <laughs> so it's been, a, it's been a long time for him. But yeah, now if everybody could go check that out, I'd, I'd appreciate it. He'd appreciate it. And uh, and yeah, that's that way you uh, can get more stuff to drive. That's yeah, yeah, partially that. Yeah, but also like I don't know, share the enthusi- enthusiasm, spread spread the love. Which saying out loud is probably better not said right yeah what about you you got some uh bird, well you, dad you, bird updates you know my update uh we have tires have arrived um i have a set of michelin defender ltx ms twos which is their next variation mm-hmm. of the the standard michelin defender and ltx and it i know it's not hundred percent. I know it's not the normal, like all terrain t- go get this tire kind of thing, but because my suburban does spend so much time on road and the type of off-roading that I do is very rarely like by myself. I normally have my buddies with their winches and all of the traction boards. Like I'm going to kind of take a different route instead of going KO2s or overly aggressive. You're or doing... like, yeah, I absolutely love the Toyo Open Country AT3s that are on the Sequoia and the Lexus uh, LX470 and, my truck. Um, and and your GX. Um, I've been very content with the, the Vredesteins that have been on the Suburban for, I don't even think it's been a full year, but I have just what we driven 36,000 miles on two of them and 48 on two of the others. Something like uh, that. I think it's forty-eight and fifty something on two of the other ones. It's That's a little, a, it's a little steeper. A lot of miles. I, what is that I in Australian? Uh, multiply by one point six, and it goes higher. By one point six per kms. Thirty-eight times one point six. Just do like one and a half, Ross. Like that's that's sixty-one thousand miles. Kilometers. Yeah. Sorry, sixty-one thousand kilometers. That's not bad. That's pretty good for tires. Pretty good. Yeah, like it's wow. it's a lot. Like and and it's not like the suburban's light. Um, <laughs> my, my only kind of like takeaway on what I'm not happy with is as they they are wearing down, I'm starting to get a lot more road noise, mm-hmm. um, specifically off the left front. Um, I haven't been able to detect an issue with the tire at all. The truck's still aligned correctly. Um, even though once the Michelin's gone, it will get aligned again. Um, new rubber, new alignment. Yeah. Um, always. Always. Yeah. So they, they first went on. Why can't I find it? It was like, uh, because it was December of 21 is when the, the first four tires went on and we replaced two of them in June of 22. So about six months after that. Um, but that was just like, that was more the truck's fault, not the tires fault. Um, but yeah, so we are, yeah, it's, it's, it's time. Um, just because we do drive so much. Um, those are actually going on the truck tomorrow. <laughs> I'm nice. very, nice. very Which much. Will be the past when. Yeah, it'll be when the show's out. I put the tires on the day before the show comes out, so Ooh. you guys, the time changes. <laughs> and for Joel, it's like two days ago, I guess. Then, like it, <laughs> how does that work? Probably by that time, yeah, it'd be close to that. Yeah, yeah. Why don't um, you just tell did... us what happened? How did they do, Joel? <laughs> yeah, how <did> they were. <laughs> Uh, so the the only other thing that I've had going on is uh, fall baseball has officially run its course. Uh, high school oh, football done for the... done done for this season. Okay. Um, 
and the glory of having a high school sophomore that is good enough to like suit up for varsity and start for JV. And so I had to go to two high school football games every week. Like oh. that has now passed as well. Um, so like, it feels like we should be getting some time back, but like the high schooler already told me, he was like, Hey man, wrestling stuck practice starts next week. So like, we'll have to start doing that stuff soon. So it just never I ends. Know. So I'm still trying to pin down some time to get out and go. And like, I don't know that we'll do a lot of off-roading. Um, it might just more be like, I want to not be at my house. We've been having we've yeah. been, uh, some home improvement projects, not the one that took six months, but like another one that was only not supposed to take four weeks. One? No, not the washing machine one. Um, but the one, this is a back porch kind of like tear all the old stuff mm -hmm. off, put a new back porch and roof on. And that was supposed to take four weeks. And it is now we're at like six weeks. And I right. think we're going to get done soon. General um, rule for home improvement is multiply by two. Right. Well, <laughs> that's, that's for time and money. I'd, I'd be fine with all of it, except like, all of the work is taking place like right outside my office window here. So like <laughs> I'm overstimulated with sounds normally with my kids anyway, but like it's, it's been a little extra lately. So that is hopefully rapidly closing down. Hopefully we'll get to watch some, uh, some college football, some NFL games out there on the back porch, a little, little camp stove. We'll get the wood burning nice. going and have a nice fall. Like it, to be honest, uh, the weather took a crazy snap cold. So we were below freezing for like five or six days in a row. Oh, dude. And now it's all, been like. All our plants yeah. are dead. We had two nights <laughs> below freezing. Right. All the plants well, died. Now we're, now we're back in the seventies right now. So like, I don't know what's going on anymore. Like, yeah, we, we very much live in that. I, I know that I've always heard people joke. Like if you don't like your way, weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. Dude, that's and I know like a lot of people have that, like a lot of uh, all areas kind of have that version yeah. of it, except when people say it in Florida, I was like, I don't understand you guys. Like you have two seasons. It's hot, hot and wet in and the summer less hot and then it's dry fuck. and less hot in the winter. <laughs> like that, those are your seasons. Like that's not. Yeah. <laughs> like the Miami in the afternoon in the summer is like, is it raining here? No, it's raining across the street. Is it raining yes. across the street? No, it's raining here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they say the same thing about Melbourne. If you don't like the weather, come back in five minutes, because um, <laughs> it'll, it'll constantly change. It's it's currently uh, twenty seven degrees Celsius here at the moment. We're expecting storms this afternoon, but which is pretty was, hot. Yeah, it's it's not that bad. Is um, eighty point six. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's warm. Yeah, mm. for what's spring? Ah, uh, yes, spring. Yeah, that's that's toasty. Yeah. Summer in <laughs> summer in about three, three weeks. Uh, no, but Ross, work, as we work... get colder, he gets hotter. Yeah, yeah. dude. Super um, easy. I, thanks. But I've been working with a guy <laughs> from Singapore, and we're talking to him about, obviously, weather there. And apparently, their four seasons are wet and wetter and hot yeah. and hotter. Uh, <laughs> that's their four seasons. So, yeah. And it is like that in Singapore. It is, yeah. I spent two and a half years in Thailand as a child. And during the monsoon season, our street would flood. Like our, our house was like a little higher up and the driveway was lower with like the garage. And like, I would always want to go ride my bike in like the floodwaters. And my parents would never like let me because it was basically like river water, like backing up through the storm drains. Mm. And, and since the rivers are basically used as nature's bathroom by half the population of Bangkok, they were like, you're never playing in that water ever. I was no. like, Cool. So like, <laughs> electrocution. You know, yeah, I, I mean, it was, I stayed inside. It was all right. Rusty metal time. things floating around. Yeah, not, not good. So now, now Ross, now's when you ask Joel how his legs is. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we uh, we had a short conversation <laughs> offline <laughs> uh, <laughs> before we started recording. So uh, yeah, Joel, it's been a while. Tell us. So it has been. Isn't happening. All I got was a leg let go. You didn't give any details to what you were up to. I was in the middle of nowhere, of all things, to top it off. I was Where? Out, Set the outside, stage. Of, out, outside of Alice Springs. Uh, for those that don't know where How that do you is, spell it's that? Alice A -L and then Springs. Al oh, Alice. <laughs> yeah. So it's literally almost in the middle of Australia. So it, it is, I was covering the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. Uh, and I'd been up on a rock 
up on the top of the hill looking to get a shot. I'd already been up there earlier in the day and I'd come back down um, to the bottom of the hill to jump back in the car to continue on with the, with the guys I was working with. And uh, I stepped off a rock and the next thing I know, my leg let go um, and uh, I was on the ground. So um, got up, kept going. Um, so I was probably halfway between that red dot and there's a place called Tea Tree, um, which was up near... Uh, you go on oh. Yeah, so Tea Tree. So somewhere in between there somewhere. Did you drive there or did you fly? Yeah. And no, dri- we started in started in Darwin uh, up the top. Uh, that yep, is, so in Darwin fact, the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So we left Darwin uh, and drove to... Um, drove pretty much the entire day and ended up in a place um about halfway between uh that sort of off that's that off road there around there somewhere uh and then basically it was the first day and then the second day we basically drove that next trip to to alice and um she's we were chasing the cars along the um along the road there so but they're super quick like you know they were doing averaging about 100 k's an hour um for solar vehicles that are powered purely by the sun, running all kinds of interesting electric motors and battery setups and and technology. Two two uh, teams from the states, one from Michigan and one from Minnesota, um, and both in two different classes. Um, but yeah, just amazing to see that the technology that these vehicles involve um, from uh, different parts around the world. The Europeans are just phenomenal at this tech. They know how to build. They know how to build cars. Um, mm-hmm. Their technology is amazing. Um, their speed is phenomenal. The, te- the team that won uh, an Optus, they even had their own on the back of their um, car w- had a sail that literally came out to help with crosswinds. Um, oh, wow. And it, could, it, it could rise up and down and then it also could move back and forth with the wind to help them keep stability and stuff. So, wind and um, solar. That's yeah. Impressive. But um, and they were they were on Bridgestone tires too, so which was um, mm. you know just great for the for the team and the brand for them to to win the event. So, um, so but yeah, a no shortage of sun out there, I presume, no. and b when you felt your your knee go, your leg decide to leave the party. I the next going. few hours I, just. I, I, adrenaline just yeah you know adrenaline kept going it was it was we sat in the car and basically chased so this is that's one of the camps but because basically what happens at the end of each day they have to oh stop at five o'clock on the dock and wherever they are they then have to set up camp and camp for the night so uh, this is the anoptis's team um uh, campsite set up by the side of the road in literally the middle of nowhere swag city um, yeah yeah and basically yeah they set up their, their tents and and whatever else and um uh, just out of frame is their support truck, which is a massive container on the back of a back of a truck, and and yeah, it's um and this is basically one of the cars. This is um uh Top Dutch, which is one of the the Dutch teams um in their um Green Thunder, I think they called it. Um, so and, cool. Yeah, this is them in the middle of uh, middle of nowhere. But you can see just the size of the solar array on the back. But um these are basically it's called the the Challenger class. This is um. One of the teams stopped at the end of the day camping up and you can see that the solar array is tilted up to mm-hmm. allow it to focus on the sun to charge up the battery to full power ready for the next morning for when they set off. Okay, so my senior year of high school, um, junior year we we founded the club, senior year we actually built it and raced it. It wasn't much of a race, but we, we built an electric race car like uh mm-hmm. you know prefab thing that we did some fiberglass work yeah and we raced it on lime rock but it was just powered oh, nice. by, powered by a car battery so once the car battery okay. died you're out yeah which you know okay. at full tilt didn't take very long um but seeing this is pretty freaking cool like this is this, this one here this car this is, is 3d all the panels are 3d printed so this awesome. is from Deacon, Deacon Unity in Victoria, um, my home state. Uh, and I was chatting to the guys and just fascinating. You can't really see it on that shot, but on the rear quarter panel, they base this on the um, the McLaren, but it's got that massive um, 
speed wind tail to speed up. That's it. So it's based on a speed tail kind of design. But yeah, having a look at it, you, you look at the intricacy of the panels, and they're all these threaded panels mm-hmm. that are then put together. So this is what's called cruiser class. So these cars have between two and four occupants in it at any one time when they're on oh, the road. Wow. Yeah, and no, no aircon. No. <sighs> In forty degree heat, is there a uh, way to degrees. capture smell and use it as a propellant? <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the Challenger class. This is uh, um, sorry, the Cruiser class. So this is the University of New South Wales. So uh, yeah, this that that took four people, um, and that thing was just amazing to see. They've done such amazing work on and the build and stuff on it. So yeah, really, really <laughs> interesting. I love looking at the airplane fuselage behind them and the car's <laughs> more aerodynamic right. than the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is this your first time covering this? Yeah. So I was supposed to cover it in... <clears throat> it's uh, 2020. I think they asked me... In, no, 19 was oh. the first one uh, that oh. I was asked to cover, but I had already committed to a couple <laughs> of other jobs, so I couldn't do it. So they got someone else to cover it, but then he moved out of the business to do something else. So they came back to me and said, look, do you want to do it this year? I said, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, the, we spent a couple of days on the road, but there was still um, sort of four days of them doing scrutineering hmm. um, and everything. So they have what's called scru- scrutineering where they're basically inside a convention center. The cars are rolled in and they have to meet a whole lot of um, requirements across the board of um, safety, roadworthy, um, power, um, everything like that. So because these cars are temporarily registered to run on the road, they have to be to be able to be registered. Um, so they are, they do, there's a whole lot of things that they have to go through to make sure that they are fully, um, you know, legal. To, so it's, to, to... this is happening on public roadways that are open. Correct. Yes. So, so they're up against road trains and things like that as well. So. Oh my God, that changes yeah. everything. That, so that's going, on, go, like, yeah, going across <laughs> cattle grids. That's crazy. Yeah. So aside from some severe pain and subsequent hospital visits, any uh, any big takeaways? This thing was awesome. This, this thing had gold wing doors. Um, <laughs> and that was, that looks like that looks Estonia. like the um, oh the God. Nissan Delta wing. No, no. Oh. Uh, uh, Zandervoot, Vanderzoot, there's that crazy... Are you looking no. for Duesenberg? No, uh, no, no. Like, no. More recent, Ross? <laughs> yeah, recent. Last, yeah. like, they just came out with another one. Zona Fell or something the, like that? The Weissman? No, no. I'll find it. Well, I found one that looks like a raindrop. That's way easier to identify. That was a very common. Uh, these, this was the Swiss. This was uh, Jew. They were called, um, and they were they were lovely people. I spent some time talking to them in the, the pits, but you can really see the configuration of the vehicle. So, two wheels at the front, and then one at the rear. Um, As I say, that one looks like a so, trike. Yeah. So they're they're either most of the Challenger class um, were three wheel, and they were either a this sort of teardrop design or they were like a catamaran design. Um, but yeah, just amazing you know, technology involved with, with so many of them and what they, what they did and, and just the were there, behind them. Were there number plate stickers? No, plate, metal, small metal plates. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. This is going to kill me if I can't think of this. <laughs> I mean, hopefully not kill you, but I understand the frustration. Oh, yeah, my... It would be definitely a new version of the podcast. Yeah, right. Local man dies. Um, <laughs> okay, well, that seems pretty freaking rad. That is a beautiful picture. Yeah, it's not mine, unfortunately. <laughs> well, compliments to the chef. Yeah. Well, that was uh, Team Apollo, which... Um, oh, there's the, yeah, you can see the, there's the gold there's wings. The yeah. I have to have yet to share a bunch of my stuff from the event. Uh, I've just been a little bit preoccupied with some stuff, and uh, I need to. I've got so much. Like, I've got so much content that I shot um, okay. over the days because in the lead up, health to and recovery, and uh, yeah. Ross, look at your screen because I want to know who stole the design of the Cybertruck to run this race. Oh God, that's <laughs> just. 
<laughs> Guess which one I'm going to clip out and share. <laughs> There's nothing that can come from my mouth right now that will reflect well on. Uh... Did you see the Actually... Matt Black? Hmm? Did you, either of you guys see the Matt Black Cybertruck? No. no. Oh, give me a second. We got something to talk about. So, friends at the Autotopian and Daniel, uh, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, Daniel Golson, G O L S O N. Uh, he went to a Cars and Coffee, and I guess the head of Tesla Design showed up in a matte black Cybertruck. And it is exactly what you expect it to be, just not, not an attractive piece of anything. <laughs> uh, so, I will share the audio. Think, yeah, it's. Think- the the proper phrase is fucking heinous. It's oh not good. <laughs> no, it's not. It looks like somebody typed into like an AI generator pixelated Minecraft pile of shit. And it's like my favorite part is like the this article goes through and like actually so digs bad. into like the finer points. I've never figured out the wheel design. It it bothers me, and I think it's because the rubber is also molded to continue the wheel design. Like, wait, really? There's like, yeah, like in the in the rubber, there are these like big squares to continue these lines. So if those get off off by any kind of adjustment, yeah, what happens when you replace them with something else? But like the just the the yeah the. Level of Tesla craftsmanship that we're used to. Just not good. There is no level of Tesla craftsmanship. It's well, and all... Look at that panel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So this is, this is where it's like on the Model S, which is still, I think, a good looking car. Um, these kind of panel gap things hide as things curve and adjust. The Cybertruck's all straight, straight lines. Like, it is only going to amplify any gaps, like, yeah. or overlap. I mean, look at the odd welds. between the yeah. A-pillar and the quarter panel. That is just, if that's, just also, terrible. scroll up a little bit. Gorgeous colored 911 in the background there. <laughs> yes. that, that's really what we should be looking at. Is that it's not Cassis, but it's it's not frozen berry metallic, so I don't know what it is. No, but it's pretty. that is uh, the right color, is what it's called. Look at the, look at the, look at the gap between yeah, the fender. Yeah, just dude, uh, I cannot fathom whatever's going on here. <laughs> what it's going to be like for body shops when they need to fix yeah. this thing, or like getting a replacement lens. You know, people were up in arms over the whole debacle with that one single Rivian that had a $40,000 repair bill. Like, what do you right. think it's going to be when one of these gets smashed into by a, you know, a Model Y performance that's got autopilot, not knowing what the fuck's going on? It's going to well, be a disaster. That rear, that rear panel is going to be above the wheel arch. It's going to be a nightmare to try and replace it. It has an issue. Oh my god. Also, like... How much is it's this just, thing going to weigh? It, it, so Elon is quoted saying it's only like 7,000 pounds. Only. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's. Well, when you compare it to the Hummer EV at close to nine, it's not... seven sounds super light, but that's still <laughs> 2,000 pounds higher than the Suburban. Like That's not, just because it's, all, it's less than the Hummer EV, that is not a good metric. Which, so by the way. 5,000, Chris? Uh, the Suburban's like 56 to 58. And so what's I, your I'm... Lexus, Ross? Hmm? What's your Lexus? You don't talk about a girl's weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's heavy. It's, it's, it, it, they're like, yeah, that, mine's a base, so it's like probably 5,100 before I put okay. all the shit on it. Yeah. So probably 50, 250, 5,300. Mm. Maybe. So that's yeah. a big, it's a big truck. The Salvatore. Seven thousand pounds is a lot of vehicle. Like yeah. people are gonna imagine somebody trying to break that downhill in a snowstorm. <laughs> it will be They're taking just gonna out keep going. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everything. 
going to be like a bus. You're going to see snowy videos of like those buses sliding down the hills, except it's going to just be a lone cyber truck taking it all yeah. out. I found There's, so found what? I, fa I found the car. <laughs> oh, what, what color is it? No, 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 no. Okay. It's, no, the car we were talking about before that. Okay. The weird one, Dunker. Oh, oh. what is Dunker Vort? D O N K E R V O O R T. Got it. Bring it up, Ross. Uh, Chris, which one is it? Just any of these? Uh, they only make one car, as far as I know. I think they only okay. make one model, yeah. But that's what the shape of that, yeah, car, the solar car from before, reminds me of. Just minus the roof and solar panels. Yeah, and I think this one has like a you know twin yeah. turbo V8. Yeah, I'll say it now. That's awesome. Also, yeah. at my uh, best friend's wedding, we happened upon a small Viper meetup, and I was like, <laughs> I was like in full jaw drop. <laughs> Did you take lots of pics? I took zero pictures because I was trying okay. to be a reasonable, like, away from phone and social media person for the weekend. But I did drool. It's it's funny. I'm glad you got a den of vipers because that's way more fun than my three Hyundai Genesis that I pulled up next to at a light. Like all oh, three. Did you say Hyundai Genesis? Yeah, <laughs> Genesis is like what is? How do you fucking say that? Like Genesis. it's the Hyundai Genesis. Genesis. Oh, oh that's Phil Collins. Yeah, I was say like I don't I don't know how to have multiple Genesis. <laughs> anyway, there were three Hyundai Genesis coupes. Uh, my favorite part was whichever one was next to me was on airbags because the kid kept raising and lowering his car, <laughs> not like low rider style, but like clearly you could see it going up and down to his buddy next to us. And my kids, my That's kids were hysterical. making fun of him. They were like, "You're such a douche, dude. Leave it at one height and go." Like it was. Was, was he doing anything like harmful in any way? Uh, they were they were just stopped at the light, and so yeah, we so got to like, turn left first. And they didn't. I I did like look in my rear view after we turned left to like see how they left the stoplight. No, they just like went across the light like normal. Yeah. I was like, you guys suck. I wanted to make fun of you for being dumbasses, but like <laughs> they were actually like they happened to be like three similar styled cars. That was it. Like, there's no. I don't think I've seen a Genesis coupe in. Counting my last time. I mean, my favorite part is the first time I saw them that night is they were all pulling out of the Taco Bell drive through and I was like, got it. Like <laughs> I know what we're dealing with here. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, um Joel, you, how's you, the all track? Good. Good. Anything interesting? Well. Yeah. Um oh, I had a yeah, I did have an interesting experience. I got back from being away somewhere and I got back in the car at the airport and drove home and I got up. Oh, I went out to get back in the car that night to go somewhere and had a flat tire. Um, I had picked up a screw and it had gone straight through the tread. So I took it to the place the next morning and they said, oh, no, because it's so close to the tread, you need a new tire. It's like, oh, that's great. So new tire. And then they took the tire off and then told me that the rim was buckled. So um, I then had to go and find a new Try and find. I then oh. went hunting for a new rim. Insulting, uh, getting on that, getting yeah. quotes for what it would be worth to buy a new one from a dealership. Uh, that was scary. But then I found a wrecker that had one. I went and borrowed. I went and bought one from them. And then I had the fun process of going back and forth to the to the to the tire place over the next week while they uh, yeah they took the they took the put me a new tire on. Then they took the new tire off and put it on the old rim i've got the old rim then re um oh, in fact, not True. Re but basically cleaned up to work again mm -hmm. uh then went back and put the new tire on the on the original rim and oh then uh they then had to order me a new tire so i've now got but the beauty of it is i now have a full size spare so um, oh, which fits they... in the um underneath the boot it normally has a space saver which is a steel space saver which is two inches smaller than the full size, but yeah, I've now like put the uh, full size. I can now get a full limit. size uh, rim in the boot, so hmm. on, on a full size tire. So, um, but yeah, that that was fun for a couple of weeks back and forth trying to deal with that. So every time I walk back into the uh, tire place, the guys are laughing at me of being in there. So, um, yeah, beyond it's, that, um, it's been 
heart sinking moment when the dealer yeah. tells you how much a uh, a new wheel is. Oh, yeah, and they're unique wheel as well because that is a slightly higher spec than the standard one. They're really hard to find. We have um, those here on the SEL Golf All Track. But they're called they're like Snowflake or something, right? No, they're called something that's no. slightly different. The the golf ones are a slightly different design. Really? Um, huh. Yeah. If you very put pretty them wheels, side, I will say. Yeah, they are very pretty wheel. They're very similar looking, mm-hmm. um, but they're not exactly the same. So, hmm. but yeah, so I now, but at the end of the day, I end up having a full-size um, spare, So, well, which is good in that, in that sense. But, unfortunate um, circumstance yeah. that ended up okay. Yeah, it is. But then I also had the fun of... Um, uh, after that, I went to uh, end up doing um, some car shopping for my parents. They were in shopping for a new uh, used BMW uh, Boy. X series. So I spent some time driving a couple of those, trying to figure out what um, what they were like as a used car. So uh, that was interesting for a few weeks, but found were them they, something uh, which was good. So. What they, they settled on? Uh, 2016 X3. X Drive to numbers, two D or two, letters, 20, jumble, 20, jumble, jumble, jumble. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my my favorite part is the the description of that model uh, was becoming my middle school student's math algebra homework. It's X three <laughs> to the X Drive. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's insane. And they're all spec differently. Like, yeah. it's just weird. Like, I've spent time. I mean, our biggest. The biggest marketplace for cars in Australia is car sales, um, and you end up hunting on there. But every one I found, there were certain specs that we were looking for, and they're all different, different finishes and different spec. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, so yeah, it was quite fun. I ended up finding one at a dealership, so it was quite good. So um, that's good. Yeah, that's so it was, that's it was a bit of an interesting experience going into delving into that world. Um, it reminded me a bit of shopping for mine. But, um, yeah, just interesting to to go into that BMW world and just see what's around, really. But I did walk into the dealership one day and they had an XM on the floor. <laughs> I just couldn't get a price. <laughs> They're just insane. The price is nuts. Dude. Um, you had one, didn't you? The worst vehicle I've ever driven. <laughs> but it's quick, though, isn't it? With the, the it engine set up? Yeah, technically, but, like, for the price... And for the power, it's not that quick because it weighs so much yeah, that okay. it should be faster. You, you know, if it was 500 pounds lighter, it would be a lot quicker. Um, and the <laughs> but one you wouldn't I had, go as far. I didn't end up writing a review of the one I had because it had some... This is where like the screen goes blank and it says technical difficulties. We will be right back. <laughs> You're like, wait, hold on. The entire car is controlled by computers. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was not good. There were not good. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to talk shit about it because, like, from a marketing perspective and a product, you know, advertising brand advertising perspective, like it makes sense. All of the all the sense in the world, like they're trying to move units, and like that's a car that says something that no other car says, and mm. it's a BMW unlike there's ever been before. Um, and given the one I had was a press car with a bunch of miles on yeah. it, and you know it's not dog lives, it's press car lives, so multiply by ten on the mileage. Yeah. Um, but it. Yeah, it it. I'll tell you off the show. I I yeah. No. I <laughs> you genuinely said it was the worst. Oh, what was what was the sticker price on it? What was it selling for? Let's. See. I have it on my because the one here. I looked at is two hundred and seventy three thousand dollars Australian. This oh my one gosh. was a hundred and fifty nine base. One sixty seven three nine five as tested. So US almost a hundred thousand dollars over a hundred thousand dollars more when you convert it to Australian dollars. Yeah. But a, yeah. Well, uh, I think one sixty three Australian is one seventy six US. 
Okay. Oh, okay, in that sense, yeah, it just shows it how was much more we play for cars, though. The third most expensive vehicle I've ever tested out of what's the top of ninety seven. I'm almost at hundred. Wow, huh? It's pretty cool. Oh god, what's the hundred going to be? Actually, most of the new cars are good these days, so I can't even joke. But yeah, the XM. I'll tell you what happened off the show. What, what were the other two expensive ones? The oh man. My spreadsheet's not cooperating with the sorting <laughs> right now. Um, the Range Rover First Edition short wheelbase, 2022, okay. which is the new one, um, yeah. which I literally couldn't fit my daughter's car seat in, which was very disappointing. Uh, wow. Beautiful car okay. otherwise. Drove great. Mm. And the, where are you? The AMG G63. Which ah, okay. I put my daughter in when she was... Two and a half weeks old, hundred and seventy three thousand okay. dollars. All right, you, wow. you're gonna have to catch up to me. I drove a well, uh, I drove a Mercedes McLaren SLR a while back, and that's like four hundred grand or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, Those things are so pretty still. And to be honest, like I know, like people shit on them, but like I would love to go drive it again. It was an absolute mm. blast. <laughs> Five hundred horsepower, a two seat car, like. Yeah, such good. So, sense. was it the Roadster or the hard top? I drove both. You drove both. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, at the time I knew someone who had uh, both the coupe and the Roadster in their collection, so I was able to get yeah, time. Is this who I them, think it so. is? Uh, not my, not related to me. So not no. sure. Okay, no, nobody, okay. No, nobody that's related to me. Um, I was just hoping you were going to say it was the the. A hard top, so I could do doors that do this. <laughs> it it did have gold wing doors, and so have I you guys did. watch Silicon Valley. Yeah, doors that do not this. all the seasons. Doors that do okay, <laughs> oh, I remember that. I have to watch it again. Yeah, um, I, I like anyways. that show because Kumail was on it, but that's because I knew Kumail from stand up stuff. Um, he's, he's very three, good talk okay. about 70 series we've waited so long. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we still have my weeping heart. We're almost out of showtime, Ross. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Let it run. Well, my favorite part is Joel's in the photos, so... Like... <laughs> I know. It doesn't get more genuine than that. <laughs> so, like, I wonder if Joel got seat time. Yes, he did. We can prove it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we, can, uh, we have photo evidence. So, so the, there's a new 70s series, Land Cruiser. Uh, it is very... Uh, conservatively redesigned I think is the appropriate way to say it like they put a new nose on it and they get yeah, it facelift new... with the grill and the headlights the and LED it... headlights are cool and there's a new so diesel good. Um, yes and it... an automatic transition transmission it looks a little funky in pictures does it look funky in like yeah, it, looks it has the two bulge Land Cruiser hood awesome yeah but but it looks it, <coughs> like when you when you see it it's like wow that's that's caught up in terms of the design of it compared mm -hmm. to where it was previously. But when um, you see it in person, just rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> I will probably never see one in person. You'll see one. It'd just be 25 years old when it gets to you. Like, yeah. If I'm lucky. So. But yeah, it's, 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 it's quite cool. Having driven the previous gen with the, the V8 and obviously the, um, the manual doing similar similar things with it driving it up hills like the first photo where you can see it's in quite a rocky setup it's um well flexi it, it's 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 amazing like it is so capable i i haven't done a lot of four wheel drive work but just driving something like this and putting it into to 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 low range and it just you just i did that same drive eight or ten times and mm -hmm. it was so easy just literally to, to bring it back drive it back up bring it back drive it back up um and it's just it is so capable um it, it just it, it makes you feel bulletproof because it it's just so easy so easy to, to for it to, to accomplish what it's doing you know it's not probably real like you know taxing off-roading like you would do if you took it out in the push but it was just mm -hmm. it's just so easy and with the auto yeah literally 
no no issues at all with it. Um, having driven the manual and, hmm. and and the setup in that, it's um yeah, it's it's yeah, it's really cool and it's a fun thing. I, I love it. And look, sure, it doesn't have the V eight anymore, but it's the, the the power planet is great. It's like really really quite quite good. Um and yeah, so it's a fun thing fun thing to drive and um yeah, I'm very lucky I get to do this sort of stuff. Does it? The- Look at the climate control switches, though. Like, this is like, this is like 30 like years ago. Yeah. There's nothing that's to go wrong with that. It's, you know, you're looking at it for the, the guys that buy it, the mines and stuff like that. It's, there's less things to go wrong. You know, wide yeah. windows, you don't have Dude. any electrics. The dust and stuff gets in when they're in the mine. There's less things for things to go wrong. That's So I, I, I get that because that's, that's the market for it. That's why I but everyone having... buys them. Like, you know, there's a lot of guys that end up buying these things that just love them because of the design and the look. I mean, that single cab is lovely. But the, for me, I think the pick of the, the bunch I've only seen. I saw some pictures, I think, when they launched it. They had some pictures of the wagon. But I reckon the wagon is the is the pick. It is such a good-looking thing in, in, in the right colour. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it's pretty awesome. So hopefully... Um, if they do a full kit again, I'll get to, I'll get to drive. Um, the wagon was a surprise gun. reveal at the 250 series debut. Yeah. It was like, by the way, here's mm. a new version of what we actually want to sell off everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for you guys, it was all about the Land Cruiser, which for us is the Prado, mm-hmm. um, because the Land Cruiser is coming back to the States for you guys. We've already got the 300 series, but this will yep. be obviously. The Prado, and then we're also going to get the the Lexus version as well. Um, so we're going to have the the GX um, coming mm-hmm. as well. So it's yeah. exciting for you know Australian fans in terms of that. But the Prado apparently is already massive wait list. You know, it's already really popular, and it's a good looking thing. You know, we don't get the power plants. I think that you will get in the states and stuff. Maybe we might get them at a later it's date. Probably better um, that way. I'm going to hold my yeah, breath, I, but. Air, like the. I'm intrigued to see what the hybrid setups like, um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it, it's it's cool that you know, yeah, it looks it looks fantastic. The dichotomy sure though, the front wing, front mirror though. Dichotomy between what you were just saying about people buy it and love the simplicity and like that's why mm-hmm. you can count on it and rely on it forever, yeah. and the, the like reliable as you can make a complicated powertrain like the IMAX stuff those are still opposites you know and like people buy 250,000 mile Land Cruisers expecting them to go another 50,000 miles without a major problem jury is out on you know on all the hybrid turbocharged stuff here yeah so. and how well how well it's going to last and stuff so yeah yeah we just we just don't know so um this is giving me this image of of that updated 70 wagon that you just had up is giving me major like isuzu trooper vibes <laughs> it does have that bit of a look doesn't it yeah so uh joel what else is going on you drove a hilux you uh you're shooting some boats yeah, uh, that bike one's a little bit older, but it was just something that I finally pulled out to do a shot with. I'm trying to find... Boats, boats, boats. Did you... Uh, yeah, so this is the video that I shot for the uh, Hilux GR Sport um, with my new drone. So this was the, literally only taken delivery of the drone a few weeks prior. Hadn't really had a chance to really fly it, but then took it out for three days to shoot this, um, this press kit with Toyota. So this was uh, quite fun. Um, playing with the new drone. There it is. My new toy. So yeah, it's uh, it's an awesome bit of kit because it's got four. Chris has managed to mute himself. <laughs> Chris is. I had to cough earlier, and so I was like, <laughs> oh, I should no, definitely no, no, no. mute myself and cough. And then I was like, oh, I'm definitely talking again. It'll they'll be they'll 30 know. Thirty years into remote work, and some of us will still do that. Though, don't feel yeah. bad. No, I only do it during these shows. Like during work, I totally. I never want to come off mute. I just don't talk. Um, <laughs> no, I love that you got an Inspire, man. Those things are awesome. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Um, so yeah, literally, uh, this was uh, this was its first flight, and then obviously the next week we were, were off to do, um, uh, we're off to do do that shoot. So yeah, that's the the 
changing between takeoff <laughs> mode and then fly mode because it brings the center of balance up uh, better. So that is simultaneously awesome and terrifying. And for the audio <laughs> listeners, the drone is moving its arms with the rotors going from above the camera to below the camera. And is... then it does another one again. So when it when you pack it up to put it in the case, it does uh, another movement where it brings them in closer so that it sits better in the in the truck. In the case. case. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So that there's there's so fly cool. mode, there's so landing crazy. mode, and there's pack mode. Like And then yeah, I think it's travel mode, I think you call it yeah. or whatever it is. And you literally press the, the rear button on it five times and it and it packs packs itself a little bit tighter. Uh so that so it sits, but then yeah, obviously the... all comes off. No, sorry, Joel. I would say the funny part, Ross, is that that tech is like 15 years old. Like these Inspire drones have been around a while, moving the um, arms up and down. He, yeah, You're just not I, in I, it. <laughs> I'm not in it. And it's also like, this seems like the kind of tech that is becoming like democratized. Like it's making its way down to, you know, from huge dollar stuff to approachable, like professional level. But I'm sure... You know, 15 years ago, it was 10x the price. That's just the nature yeah. of tech, right? But it's also that this, 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 the the tech that comes with it. So now, previously, with the previous Gen Inspire, you have to have a separate controller with um, uh, with a separate screen on it. The new controller has an inbuilt screen. Um, I actually have two, so that someone can fly the drone and then someone can operate the camera separately. So uh, because of the beauty with this gimbal is that it's oh, independent so it can literally um spin the full 360 degrees without getting the props and stuff in it that's the other reason why the the legs go up so um oh my God, so yeah we spent cool. we spent a good couple of days out in the out in regional victoria um shooting this and and me having some fun flying uh flying the drone to get some some footage for the rescue so so um, if you have the ability <clears throat> to and pardon my ignorance on this stuff. Like I watch and appreciate drone stuff, but I know effectively nothing about it. If you have the ability for somebody to pilot it and somebody else to control the camera, what is the delta in price and quality between the drone two person setup and a helicopter with somebody shooting off the side of a helicopter? Because you're they, looking at pricing wise, you, the the hourly rate is still probably it's still a big difference. It's so I would say huge. Cost, it's got to yeah. be still a, <laughs> but the quality it's still a massive difference. Footage procured. Is, Look, it's getting it's certainly getting better. This camera, this camera will now shoot 8K, but oh the, the the price of what this is <clears> worth com compared to what a full camera setup compared to what they use in similar to movies and ads and whatever else it, it's still a it's a lot bigger setup and a lot mm -hmm. more expensive in that respect so yeah it does certainly add to it um in um I, yeah i, I would i i estimate it you're only like spending a tenth of what it would like full in on the helicopter because you got to train a pilot fuel mm -hmm. right. all of that Insurance. plus your camera operator yeah and sure like the drone pilot tr fully trained with a who competent drone, like it, it's got to be only like a tenth of what it would be for a helicopter. Like it's, yeah, I'm thinking like I've seen some motorsport where they chase with a drone. Yeah, you know, like that's a rally like, cross chases with drones, and I love it. Yeah, <laughs> watching you F1, yeah. Dude, watching F1 this weekend, there were multiple times, which is kind of a rarity that you could see the helicopter following circuit from you know like a trackside camera yeah but it's it's yeah, crazy how the an, gap is closed level in, in that respect so i love it i love it i think it's cool very cool so yeah. um yeah time we're we're closing on time joel what else you got going on <laughs> not much healing. at the moment things yeah heal, healing, healing at the moment, unfortunately yes. um, recommend but healing recommend yeah exactly so healing at the moment i've got a couple of things um looking forward to getting stuck into next year which will be which will be cool um but yeah at the moment just doing a bit of healing cool. dude I, I felt like since the end of covid all i have seen you do is visit airports 
<laughs> yeah, this year uh, I haven't done my final final tally, uh, but there was quite a busy. I think I got up to I got to over thirty flights this year. Yes. Um, so it was uh, it was uh, it was quite hectic in in that respect. So I think that's um, more than I've done in my life. Yeah, probably. No, it's probably about the same number that I've done. It would it would be like airport photo, classic car, very good looking car photo, other airport <laughs> photo, maybe on, different city landscape. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. every night. <laughs> uh, it has has varied, and there's a whole lot of stuff I haven't even posted from this year. There's a whole bunch more drone stuff that I've shot, and a bunch of other projects I've worked on that uh, I haven't done a lot. But yeah, I probably uh, as of now I've probably done. 30, probably 35 flights this year. Um, I've still got a couple more to do, but I've been to every state except uh, the state I was born in this year, almost by the end of the year. So, um, to add in Australia. So, you know, I, I, was like, I can't remember if you were born in Taz or Victoria. Taz. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like I was I pretty sure Taz was home, home. So, yeah. Yeah. Taz was where I was born. So, uh, I haven't. Won't get there probably this year, um, but I'm uh, I'll probably get to, to the other last other state off the list before the end of the year. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, it was been a it was been a busy year. So it's good to get back and uh, and chat with you guys. Yeah, it's great. Seriously, it's nice I'm to not, catch we, up. <laughs> we gotta yeah. do this more often, man. I, I've, <laughs> we've known each other too long to drag these uh, time out this long between shows. Well, the next one will be hopefully you know we'll get uh, we'll get over there. So my plan is to to do a um uh, at some stage to do a Hooniverse visit trip. I think so. Um, oh, okay. You know, see Jeff and Cali, and then head across. And uh, I've got uh, I've got to see friends in Texas, and then you guys uh, jump up and see Robbie. And then uh, oh, across to, to, this, to the uh, This trip yeah, is getting dude. very long. <laughs> I, uh, I think like five years ago, I said we should do a, a huge Hooniverse like meetup. Just get everybody all together, drag Camille out of, you know, hibernation. Yeah, Boston. Boston <laughs> just get all of us together. So. You're, with enough when you notice, say drag make it happen. Camille out of hibernation, is like, is that a, just an attitude adjustment or seasonal? Because uh, <laughs> I think probably seasonal. I plead the fifth. I don't think we're adjusting that, that attitude ever. And well, I love if he it. buys that Jeep, it's definitely going to be attitude. <laughs> <laughs> he made fun of me the other day because I responded to Mike Levine. So I'm going to, Camille and I can have as much fun as we want. So. <laughs> oh, boy, man. Oh, God. Uh, All right. Well, it was on threads. No one saw it. We're good. <laughs> I, I honestly haven't even thought about threads since the last time you mentioned it, was, which was weeks ago. So I, I did uh, realize pretty quick, like thread threads works. It's a decent experience. Like it's not. It's definitely not for me. The what what Twitter Twitter had become at the end is just like a dumpster fire of all my shit. But like when I moved over to threads, it was just like follow. It like basically moved Instagram account that I followed to threads. Well, literally every, every four out of five posts was another auto journalist posting what vehicle they were driving that week. And I was getting very frustrated because <laughs> I was in the same thing every week and I didn't need the <laughs> daily reminders of that, Dude, but it is, you should a hundred percent just, do posts that are like this week I'm driving and like just the post same a, shit. Post like, a different, <laughs> different photo. Just a different photo. Yeah, I think oh it, there's part God. of me that every now and then it just needs to go through the suburban and discover what's been left and record it, like in the back of the suburban from the kids. Like they, oh. like I just like. Yeah. I'm, I'm currently <laughs> on. A never-ending perpetual motion device of a Cheerio scavenger hunt. Cheerio dust is one of the most intense substances on the planet. We don't talk about that enough. Oh my of god! Once it gets slightly damp, it's almost cement. Like <laughs> just, you're never coming out of car seats with that. It's it's. Why stop pulling seats out and finding out what's underneath them? I bought my truck CPO, and I still occasionally find stuff from the prior owner. Like, wow, that's weird. Nobody else has eaten that in my car. Oh. 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 Right. Bought it used. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's actually I I remember that white forerunner I imported that from they sent Canada to, from Canada. They, the one that they, Camille they sent no, us. No, you bought Chris, wasn't it? No, no, no. Mine was no, silver. My Chris okay. was silver and from states, but I bought and imported a um a, a white forerunner, and they sent us through a bomb scanner, and I was cleaning it out like when I got home with it after it stopped being zero degrees Fahrenheit. And I found this knife under the front seat. I was like, oh, <laughs> good thing they weren't doing any other checks for anything because there were there was like knife and a whole bunch of other things. So wait, did they find the knife during the bomb scan or not? Nope. <laughs> they, uh, I got stories to tell them. Yeah that one. Yeah that well well done. Missed that truck. Wonder where it is. Did you give it a nickname? It was the Stormtrooper, but it wasn't. It that was the Stormtrooper. That yeah. wasn't nicknamed by me. That was by the prior owner, the guy that I bought it from. Okay. I called it that, and I just carried it on because it came. It came from Canada, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Uh, from the glorious, frigid Ottawa, where it like I don't think it broke ten degrees Fahrenheit for the seventy-two hours we were there. Oh, wow. Fucking freezing. Just need Canada to buy a Caribbean island, man. I'm in. Dude, I stand <laughs> that ground. Buy island. Declare independence. Associate with Canada. Done. Yeah. Good health Free care. Free health care. <laughs> That's not where we cold. went with it. <laughs> yeah. Every time it's about how do we get universal health care and not have to live in, like, frigid winters. Where it's fucking freezing. Oh, my God. Or we just... Just move and get like one compound in Canada and live there like six months and one day a year, <laughs> and the rest live in like the Caribbean. So you know the best part of that is the U.S. would still ask us for our tax dollars. Yeah, fuck <laughs> expats Jesus. like U.S. expats around the world still have to pay taxes back to the U.S. I don't want to go to sleep mad. I think we should stop this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll Jill's wrap it up like, real fast. Jill's, Jill's laughing at us. <laughs> like, oh, developing, developing country problems. We won't talk about what YouTube Jesus. video I was watching before we started the show, that Ross. <laughs> oh, boy. Tell, tell me it, off, off. I'll tell show. you after we stop yeah. recording. Yeah. We're like uh, deep in the weeds here. Yep. So you can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts, like and subscribe on YouTube. You may have noticed, if you're a regular listener to the show, that we are putting way more crap out for clips. Um, there's Chris we've just seen all the credit to Chris on that. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. So hundred ten percent. Like and like and share those clips, please, because then we can use. There's there's statistics that come off those clips that companies ask for, and. Uh, what was the latest percentage increase? Because clearly, like, we haven't been oh, doing them God, a lot. And like, so I think like, the latest one, the one I sent you today is a thousand percentage increase. <laughs> wow. Today, today's account reached increase is a 12,146% increase. <laughs> so we've reached yeah. close to 22,000 social media accounts with the amount this of stuff is, I've been putting uh, out lately. <laughs> digital media marketing and SEO. A career is really uh, coming in handy here. It's, it, it, it's something. It, it's something. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, follow Joel. It's at Joel's Joel Strick photo Instagram, joelstrickland.com.au for the website. And new website yeah, new website coming soon. Do you need some SEO? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. Is it in WordPress at least? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I've got to okay, go building it. We've been building it, building it for twelve months, and we're just trying to get it finished. So, um, okay. I'm being too pedantic with my selection of images that I want to put up. So, uh, I've spent some time trying to build it. So, yeah, I understand it. So. I can I can look up words. We can talk about words later. Yeah. Uh, Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. Which, by the way, we got to watch yourself on no, not like the one from Friends. If these people start dying in like a pattern, like Matthew Perry died, like if Ross oh, passes Jesus. away, yeah, you're gonna actually have to be like David Schwimmer dies. You're a deep shit. Like <laughs> we've been we've been joking about me changing my handle since for a long show time. Started. So at least taking three years now. Yeah, taking <laughs> suggestions for new handles. For a little while, I was just going to do 
it was what was Jeff's? Jeff's was like Hooniverse Jeff. I was just gonna do <laughs> like not Hooniverse Jeff or something like that. Not <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would like chuckle, not <laughs> not laugh, but like <laughs> like kind of <laughs> just like a, uh... yeah, like uh, and to the next thing. Yeah. And then he'd go smoke League a week in front of us, which which you could do that too, because Connecticut and yeah, I'm nowhere near any yeah, of that. Yeah, so. like brain meds and and they don't clash. Yep. Well they do clash, Sweet. they don't mesh. Yeah. Anyways. Thank you, Joel. Thanks, Joel. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me on. Good to chat. Yeah.